But talking about being mugged by reality, that, that's exactly what's happened to the Northern Territory Government, where, as we predicted last week, they have finally agreed to reinstate alcohol bans in Indigenous communities eight months after scrapping them. And there's also been a reality check at the ABC when it comes to the real problems involving Indigenous communities and the people of Alice Springs. Let me walk you through this and explain why the Territory's Chief Minister, Natasha Files, should quit. Let's start with the ABC. And this time last week, you, you'll remember, they, they were running national reports portraying the people of the Alice as white supremacists. Yet the national broadcaster once again unfairly slurring the very people who pay for it. The ABC downplayed the real issues and it demonised the innocent victims, the mainstream Australian taxpayers. But last night, well, last night on the 7.30 program, they belatedly decided that ABC viewers could be exposed to the facts, to the truth, to the reality. The streets of Mbantua, Alice Springs, transform after dark. And among the nightly chaos are kids. Where's your brother? Where's Andrew? Hey! Our patrol service is to take people away from the CBD, to help people get home to a safe space. We've had uh, staff assaulted, attacked, home invaded. Um, we've had property stolen regularly. So we've reached a point of, of exhaustion with it, frankly. Yeah, we're at a real tipping point. Yeah, yeah so we're not white supremacists now, hey? It was actually a good report. It looked at the problems, it looked at po possible causes and possible solutions. But have a listen to the ABC's Media Watch and you'd think Auntie had been leading the charge on fixing the drastic social problems in the Red Centre. You see, there's been madness on the streets of Alice for months now, but only local media and the ABC have really been covering it. Really? Anyone watching this station knows that that is absolute rubbish. Have a look at Jacinta Nampajimba Price on this station last July. It's going to create absolute mayhem, if not already creating mayhem. Uh, we don't need alcohol back out in vulnerable uh, communities. As you know, we've been covering these issues with Nampa Jimpa Price for years before that. The following month, when the new senator returned home from Parliament in Canberra, the first thing she saw was more lawlessness. I was told by another community member of a DV uh, issue where a woman and a child were being um, violently attacked in their own home and that it took authorities 45 minutes to get to the scene, so I've yet to hear more on that. Um, particular case, but it's just it's just ongoing. It's like it just feels like there's no end to it, and no real action being taken on these on these issues. Yeah. So yes, there was plenty of attention in the media. The ABC just chose to ignore it, and governments, of course, but it was ignored in the political world right across the the spectrum, really. And even when the territory's new federal Labor MP questioned the scrapping of alcohol bans. When a government puts in a protective regime of that kind and leaves it in place for that long, you can't just suddenly pull the pin on it without any protection, sanctuary or plan for the vulnerable women and children whom the original measure was supposed to protect. Now, despite this attention and a steep rise in crime and pleas from Indigenous community groups and from the local council, the Chief Minister stubbornly stuck by her decision to scrap those alcohol bans. We won't be putting back in place a race-based law that discriminates purely on your race. Absolutely, we will continue to do the hard work and the heavy lifting when it comes to alcohol policies, but it will be broad across the Northern Territory, not targeting people just because they're Aboriginal, which is what that law did. Would not listen. And then it all continued to escalate. There was more crime, more people were hurt, more families suffered, and it all came to a head and finally the Prime Minister was dragged to Alice Springs and then he finally got the Northern Territory Chief Minister under pressure and got her to do the obvious, do what was necessary, do the bare minimum and reinstate those alcohol bans. And yet yesterday, after this history of refusing to listen 
of rejecting pleas, of repeatedly having the problems drawn to her attention, she had the gall to say this. As I said last week, hindsight is a wonderful thing, but we had a Commonwealth Government that discontinued. The legislation was not continuing. We have a strong program around local decision-making, empowering communities, and so we work to put in place legislation that allows communities to make those decisions. Hindsight? She cites hindsight? Files was warned. She ignored the warnings. Then the strife began to grow and she rejected the calls for help. Then the problems escalated and she only acted, only did what locals had been pleading for her to do after national media attention and the Prime Minister's pressure was brought to bear. She should resign as Chief Minister because she has refused to listen to her own constituents. She has ignored Territorians while Territorians suffered as a consequence of her ignorance, her refusal to act. And others then had to step in. Clearly she's failed at the job. Clearly she's not been doing her job. So she might as well make it official by resigning.